This is the Black Rifle Coffee Model X. And today, I'm gonna show you how I took it from this to this. So there was a lot of fun things done to this, some practical, some not so practical. So let's start with the exterior. Wanted to go with a little kind of vintage uh, Jeep vibe to this. So we did the OD green, a little distressed, our coffee saves uh, logo on the hood. And then of course the branding on the front. I wanted to do something a little bit different than the typical Model X body style. So I reached out to the guys at Unplug Performance and I put their body kit on this, so it has a little bit more of, I don't know, an aggressive feel to it, but it matches really well with this color theme. So you, you see like the curvature and everything, you get that matte black down there. Just the contours themselves, I think, add a lot to the body and its overall look. Really not a whole lot of fancy stuff other than the body kit. Um, I will say this, you know, we took and we put these these rivets on the sides and everything, just to add a little bit more of an industrial vibe to it. Does it add any functionality or anything like that? If anything, it may cause more drag, who knows? But the wheels and tires was something that I really, really wanted to get right. So I reached out to guys at Vossen to see if you know they had any different tire setups or any kind of wheel tire combos that they would recommend for higher speeds, but still being able to go off road. Uh, and I think that these uh, Michelin cross climate SUV tires look really, really good. It doesn't have like that off-road vibe to it. it, still has that kind of smaller profile, but the wheels just kind of make it pop. I really dig it. So I uh, ended up going with these Vossen wheels, having the gold contrast it. I think that's a really cool color combo. Nothing really fancy outside of uh, the body kit. I wanted to add more of that Jeep vibe. So we have like the satchels on the side, we have like the little K bar, our Black Rifle coffee patch here on it and the Coffee Saves uh, logo. I was debating for a while whether or not I wanted to take and actually drill these into the body or not, but I didn't know whenever uh, I first shot up the car I was gonna repair it. And then add some of this stuff to it. And then if need be, once we're done with the videos, if my partners at the company didn't want to reimburse me for the car, I was gonna sell it. So I was really reluctant to drill and mount things to the body because then I wouldn't be able to resell it if need be. But fortunately, Evan and the guys said, hey, you know what, we'll, we'll buy that from you and we'll take and we'll, we'll put it in trade shows, we'll take it to coffee shops as we open them up and everything. So maybe these might get more of a fixed mount uh, moving forward, but right now they're just attached uh, via these uh, sea suckers. Moving to the back here, still sticking with the coffee saves kind of theme to it. So you got that, that Jeep vibe, you got your recovery shovel here. This is a, an older World War II recovery shovel that we uh, ended up picking up 
uh, second hand. And then you get to the body kit here. I just think it all kind of fits really well. You can see there where I was talking about how that black just kind of pops off of the wrap there and everything. I just think it looks so cool. So that is all the exterior stuff. Let's start getting to the fun stuff. So starting with the back here, we have our coffee shop. I have this Goal Zero Yeti here. This typically sits beneath all the coffee making equipment. I didn't want to tie the equipment to the vehicle electrically because if it shifts and transport and stuff like that, I wanted an easy solution that I could plug these things in, but still make them functional so it's not just cosmetic. So generally I'll take and I'll, I'll charge a dude up and then I'll put it in the trunk there. And then we have a, a hole in the middle of the wood there that all the cables route down into nice and cleanly. But that's what powers the coffee shop. I had my buddy Doc at the right edge take and make a walnut finished wood inlay for kind of the coffee bar here. And it has this, this cool coffee bean epoxy with gold flake, but then the walnut finish to match everything there in the Tesla. And we still have the walnut finish on the GS3 and the, the tamp here. Now, I don't have any mugs on this right now because came out to the ranch today and I didn't want to break anything driving out, but typically you can take and set your mugs there. So when we go to events, this is a legit coffee shop. We can be pulling shots, grinding coffee and everything else. So when people come up, we can pick one of our exclusive coffee club subscription roasts. If you're not subscribed, you should check that out. We actually offer several types of subscriptions. Now, most people are where you can get our core roast delivered to you regularly, but our exclusive coffee club subscription features micro lots from small farms around the world. That's where you can find a lot of these cool funky bags that you might not have seen before. We also have merch and sticker clubs if that tickles your fancy. If you're a coffee head, you're going to love what I have back here for equipment. First up is the Weber Workshops EG1 Flat Burr Grinder. Not only is this thing a precision coffee tool, it's a work of art. I freaking love it. Right beside it, I have the Lamarzocco GS3 Espresso Machine. If you know your coffee, you've probably heard of Lamarzocco. The GS3 is one of those pieces of equipment that you just can't beat for functionality combined with style. It pulls shots, steams milk, heats cups, really anything you need to do to make espresso drinks. Both of these systems being powered by the Goal Zero Yeti. So I wanted this, this coffee shop to kind of, I don't know, have that vibe to it. Uh, so let's move to the frunk. Look at that, <laughs> look at that. So for the frunk, again, all of this is a work in progress. So it may have little changes here and there, depending on when you see it next, from the video to maybe SHOT Show to uh, a, a coffee shop opening or something like that. The idea with the frunk was we'll rhino line it, drill some holes and put drain plugs in it and then we can take and load up all the rtd in it and put some ice in there and whenever it's done just drain the water out and everything so again nothing too crazy but for us it's super functional i thought it was a cool addition to the overall build now moving into the car i know what you guys are wanting to see we're gonna get there i promise I promise. Not a lot of crazy stuff on the interior as far as the driver or the front passenger, but I did want to do something a little bit different because whenever I did the Toyota Prius build, we had to gut out the interior, reinforce the floor pan, and just put a roll cage in there. And when people saw it in person, they were like, oh my God, this is the Prius. This is the, the car with the Vulcan mounted to it. It's so cool. And then they get to the car and they look inside and they're like, oh, that's a stock interior and it looks like it's been sitting in a garage and animals have been nesting in it because they probably were because there was a big hole in the roof but for this because we're going to take it to trade shows we're going to end up taking it to coffee shops for grand openings and everything i really wanted to have something that was cool that people could see outside of the obvious uh, so for attention to detail i went for these espresso and black seats and then i took and put uh, Velcro pile in the headrest and the BRCC reticle logo. So kind of like your operator hats and everything, you could take and put patches up there and everything, which I'm sure we will. I just feel like it adds more to the overall theme that's still on brand with um, our coffee company. And everything matches that, again, 
black and walnut interior. But I know what you guys really want to see. And that's why I have EarPro here. Uh, so let's move. And this is the fun part. <laughs> so to say that this was a long road would be an understatement. There's been so many variations of how we've been modifying the different systems. Uh, originally, you'll be able to see in some of the B-roll footage that I have from the studio and everything else, originally this was designed for the empty shell micro gun. And the reason for that was uh, their weapon system generates around 35 foot pounds of torque, but it's a prototype. And I thought it was a cool thing to add to this and everything. So we kind of underbuilt the system. And over the last year, we kept running into issues. We had the gun out, it would cycle dummy rounds and everything, but we could never get it to fire blanks. And ultimately we were able to get it to the range to shoot live fire. And it's really, really important for me because all of the videos that I do are legit. I don't fake anything. I don't do any Hollywood effects with VFX or anything like that. Everything you see that I do is legit, right? So if I have an RPG, a grenade, or anything like that, it's not Tannerite, that's legit high explosives. So whenever I did the Rambo exploding arrows, that's all legit. The other thing is whenever you're, you're filming stuff in slow motion, you can't fake that, right? I wanted to see the bullets traveling down the sides of the gun. Um, so there's not many people out there that manufacture mini guns, specifically a 5.56 variant. Because the 308 I've used in a lot of stuff. I did the handheld M2, I did the handheld uh, mini gun in 308. Felt like there's a lot of those out there. I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I reached out to the guys at ProFence and they came in so clutch at the last minute. They just totally saved the day with this project because you can't find a 5.56 minigun anywhere. GE had the GE six pack back in the day, but they kind of abandoned that program. And ProFence has completely kind of reinvented that system. The ProFence PF 5.56 has an effective range of 900 meters. It shoots the 5.56 NATO round and has a variable fire rate of up to 4,000 rounds per minute. So with two guns, that's 8,000 rounds of sustained fire. With dual fire controls, you can program one button for let's say 1,000 rounds per minute and the other for 4,000. That way when you're shooting, you can go slower for target acquisition, ramp up for more rounds on target, and then conserve ammo accordingly. If you don't like the speed you're at, you can always adjust on the fly with the integrated toggle. And speaking of ammo, you also have a display to gauge the amount of ammo you have left, which is really cool. That way you don't have to play the guessing game with how much burp you have left. A lot of really cool features in this. The guys came out, helped reinforce this. You can see how we have it deployed right now. We don't have the reinforcement struts on it, but the gun weighs 33 pounds and generates 70 pounds of recoil, which isn't a lot compared to an M134, but we still needed to upgrade and reinforce the mounting platform since we kind of underbuilt it for those specs. The second we went to remove the middle row seat, we found a tack weld on one of the bolts that holds the seat in, and Brian, uh, the, the guy who did all the fabrication work and some of the software and uh, some of the sensor work, uh, he called me and he was like, hey man, you know as soon as you torque this nut and remove that tack weld off of that, it completely voids the vehicle's warranty. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're doing this. So uh, shout out to Brian for doing that, man. He came in again, like so many people helped make this project possible. So uh, I couldn't have done it without any of these guys. But the idea here is we're gonna take and run the uh, feed shoots up underneath the carpet here. So you'd have like a, an ammo can down underneath that. So you could put you know, a thousand rounds of ammo or whatever you wanted down in there, but keeping it nice and tucked away and clean looking. It's a little dirty right now because we've had a lot of wind and everything, but uh, another really kind of unsuspecting feature about this that's really kind of cool is these ammo cans right here. You might look at it and go, oh, cool, more ammo for the guns. No, that's actually the sensors in the seat because there's so many sensors that either measure the weight of a person on the seat, their position, 
for the modulation of airflow in the event of an airbag deployment. It's a really smart car. We had to do a lot of workarounds. A lot of things had to be bypassed or jumped and, and stuff like that. And again, the, those guys over at uh, Euro Cars and um, Brian really just really, really like helped make this happen. If you guys haven't seen the Unplug Performance Tesla where they completely totaled that car for the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. <laughs> 48 hours, they completely almost ground up or rebuilt that vehicle for the race. It's amazing. So some of these guys were the guys that helped make this happen. So I had nothing but faith in them and being able to get everything done that we needed to do without catching the car on fire. <laughs> that was like, honestly, that was one of my biggest concerns that there's so much uh, potential for puncturing the, the battery cells or something like that. You know, I didn't want to get that hoverboard situation where we do something <laughs> and the car just catches on fire. Well, there it goes. But that was one of the things I wanted to give people creative liberties too and be able to do different things that they wanted to. So he was like, I want to hardwire this whole system to the vehicle. So we could have went with a pneumatic, uh, put an air, air compressor in here and have like that kind of violent deployment of the, the system. But he wanted to wire it up with electric motors tied into the car and everything else. And I think it's kind of cool. The speed will probably end up adjusting it so it deploys out faster. Another one of the companies that came in super clutch for us was Standard Armament. They created the feed chutes for this. We had some different size lengths that we weren't really sure if we're gonna need three foot, four foot, six foot or what. So I even debated on putting a bungee up here that kind of pulled the slack in as the arms deployed in or out. Uh, but ultimately, it does a pretty good job as is with this kind of wrap here and then the D-rings on the side, just kind of pushing back up there into where the, the mount is for the floor pan. This is the Black Rifle Coffee Model X. I've talked, I've rambled on enough. Let's get this dude to the range. If there's anything that you guys would want to see in front of this, let me know in the comments below. We're gonna set up some range days here. We're gonna film some slow-mo of the guns firing. We're gonna put some different targets in front of it. Uh, you'll probably see some videos here in the next few days. So make sure you're subscribed, check them back in on the channel and everything. But let me know because I'm sure there's gonna be many more days with this dude at the range and be looking forward to seeing it at a coffee shop near you. Stop. It's Tactic Squatch, baby! You guys want some coffee? Yes. So bad. Let's go grab a cup. Yes.